From KGW, this is The Good Stuff. I think I just uh, said, wow, I was like, you know, can't believe it. Uh, super honored. It's, it's wonderful to be back a part of this. Eight Portland restaurants and chefs have been recognized as some of the best in the country. Their nominees for the 2024 James Beard Awards. Hey everybody, thanks so much for joining us tonight for the good stuff. I'm Brittany Falkers. The James Beard Foundation has been recognizing top chefs and restaurants since 1991. And our Daisy Caballero got to speak with some of the semi-finalists. Hi Tom. Hi Peter, how are you today? Peter Vong is one of the 2024 James Beard Award semifinalists for Best Chef in the Northwest and Pacific. But this isn't his first time being nominated. But this is our number five. Peter is the chef to the mouth-watering Vietnamese noodle soup Southeast Portlanders know and love and says he does it with passion every single time. This is my favorite customer right here. By keeping his customers and the quality of his food always top of mind. You know, I just do it from my heart. I thank all the customers who support me the last 21 years. And that's why I love it and I keep doing my best. You get a nomination like this and you're like, we need to keep pushing. People are, again, people are enjoying what we're doing. Brent Braun is the wine director of OK Omens in Southeast, who is up for outstanding wine for the James Beard Award. He says this is their second year in a row being nominated after a few rough years after the pandemic. To get to the second year feels like more of a validation that uh, the work we're doing is really having an effect and really resonating with people. He adds, staying unique and quirky with their wine program has been perfect for showing who they are and what they bring to the table. So the way we found it this morning is I had a before I woke up text from Portland's Gary the Foodie. Ryan Roadhouse is the owner of Notoguru in Northeast. He's nominated for Best Chef in the Northwest and Pacific. This is his seventh time being a semifinalist. I think I just uh, said, wow, I was like, you know, can't believe it. Uh, super honored. It's, it's wonderful to be back a part of this. Ryan cooks Japanese cuisine and says his love for food brought him to Oregon as the ingredients he cooks with are located throughout the state. He shares wise words from a former chef that keeps him inspired every day. So he said, but don't do anything different than you're doing now. Just love what you do, work hard, show up every day, and that's the secret, I guess. And we get to enjoy it. We, by the way, have a list of all the 2024 James Beard Award, Award nominees on our website, KGW.com. You can check that out. Of course, they include the eight Portland chefs and restaurants, along with one in Ashland and in McMinnville. And while they can't all make the list, our area is full of amazing places to grab a bite. From diners and dives to cafes and food trucks, I asked you to post a foodie photo and give your favorite local eatery a shout out. All right, warning, this is gonna make you hungry. Let's start with a sandwich that, oh, I want in my belly right now. The French dip, AKA Devin's dip at LJ's Cafe in Milwaukee. Oh my gosh, this one has made me hungry since I saw the photo early this afternoon. This is one of Jennifer's favorites. And hey, if you're a fan of ramen, Rebecca suggests you try out Wu Ron's on Portland's east side over by Omzi. She says it's so yummy and perfect for cold weather. Sarah gives a shout out to a great neighborhood spot in Vancouver. Grady's Public House. This is their cottage pie. It's like a shepherd's pie, but with beef instead of lamb. Yummy. And when it comes to local diners, Nicole shared her favorite, aptly named The Diner in McMinnville. She says it's her go-to breakfast spot, but all their food is amazing with a staff to back it up. Yeah, tip your servers. And maybe you just need a quick coffee pickup. Right? That For that, Amy says that you should check out Arrow Coffee and Desserts in Beaverton. And hey, here's a dish that's a feast for your eyes and stomach. Fried Rainbow Surf Perch from Fuego All Day in Happy Valley. Isn't that beautiful? Jason says it's outstanding. But what about dessert? Can't forget about dessert, right? For that, Michelle suggests you check out 808 Cheesecake in Gladstone. They have Hawaiian flavors, bringing their delicious flavors, serving up shaved ice, cakes, and some sweet and savory options too. I was looking at their menu and it had my mouth 
watering. And hey, we have we have so many great places. So maybe you want to share your restaurant shout outs or photos of any of the good stuff happening in your community. Send them on over by texting us at 503-226-5088. You can also email me at the good stuff at KGW.com. And hey, if you're watching your alcohol intake, maybe you're taking part in dry January. A local business has some pretty great options for you. China Green got a look at the mocktails, giving people an elevated drinking experience without the alcohol. Even if you don't drink alcohol, making a drink can still be fun. And I'm here with Dan McLaughlin with Portland Syrups. So you have so much stuff here, so many things to choose from. Uh, but first I wanna know, how did you start this? How did this become a thing? Uh, so it's actually a friend and neighbor and I back in 2012. He was a food critic and neither of us drank alcohol. So, and he would go out to really fancy restaurants and we realized there's a hole because if you are getting a great meal, there's not a great drink you can have that doesn't contain alcohol. So if you don't have a cocktail, it's really just kind of coffee or soda. So we wanted to make an elevated beverage experience that could pair with a, an excellent meal. And you are gonna make an elevated beverage experience for me right now, right? Yes. Okay, what are we making? Yes. So right now I'm gonna do a local, another local company called Wilderton. They make an NA Spirit. This is like an NA uh, whiskey. And this is their earthen, so it's going to be two ounces of earthen. A nice glass. One ounce of our ginger syrup. Okay. Uh, lower sugar, really good ingredients, great taste. Um, it's all about the flavor and not about the sweetener. And then we're just going to top it off with any kind of plain sparkling water. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Add a little dash of our aromatic bitters. You have everything. We have everything. <laughs> everything you need, except for the booze. Except for the booze, which is uh, good. Okay. Yeah, and then we will give this a little stir. Oh, and that's it. I would garnish with a lime, but we don't have fresh fruit. Yeah, this is definitely something I would get at a dinner and feel like I can hang with everybody who's getting an alcoholic drink. Yeah, it's like a very sophisticated uh, an adult beverage for non-drinking experiences. And then you also have your recipes here. You have a recipe book. Uh, with everything that you like to make and that you think other people would like to make. Yeah, and this one is like a, a, an in a cocktail, so a non-alcoholic focus recipe book, but on every recipe there's pairing for spirits. Mm -hmm. So if you want to make a drink for half your friends who don't drink, but then put booze in it for the other half, you can do that. Everybody going to have the same drink, just with a different effect. I love that, Demi Glotham. Thank you so much. So if you want to have a drink without some alcohol and without a hangover, here's your place. Looks tasty, I might try that. Well, hey, still to come, a look at the good work of volunteers helping to make Portland shine after last week's winter weather. But first, did you see any rainbows today? We did. We got this shot from of one that formed over downtown Portland after a late afternoon downpour. A little rainbow after all that rain.
Well, now that the ice and snow is gone from last week's storm, volunteers are busy making sure the city is cleaned up. You may have noticed more garbage than usual in parts of Portland. The ice delayed pickup and many people were walking instead of driving, which might have added to all that extra trash. Because of the, the bad weather and everything, we have more people who are uh, instead of sitting in a park and just being there, they're kind of wandering around and they, they get food and they eat what they want and they throw the rest on the ground. First of all, don't throw your <laughs> trash on the ground. Find a trash can. But the good thing is where there's a problem, you'll always find Oregonians ready to roll up their sleeves to help. We went out with volunteers yesterday to see their good work. Solve organizes cleanups all year round, but they had to cancel their MLK Day event where they expected 400 people to come out, so they were busy making up for lost time. If you'd like to help, you can sign up for a cleanup near you with Solve. And here's another great option. There's also an organization called Adopt One Block where you can become an ambassador for a street near you and help to clean it up, taking pride in your community. I like that. Well, hey, a Portland City employee has received quite the honor, a day in his name to recognize 30 years of public service. Ernie Jones is retiring after three decades, the last eight with the City of Portland's Bureau of Emergency Management. Jones built the Earthquake Emergency Communications Nodes Program. Those are the spots that are spread out all around the city where community members can call for help following a disaster. He also trained hundreds of volunteers on emergency communication. His accomplishments were lauded during a recent city council meeting. His program is probably the single most important effort that will help save lives and connect Portlanders in the event of a major catastrophe such as the Cascadia earthquake. The many positive relationships I've developed over, during my time have continued and do continue to feed me and I truly want to express my, uh, my appreciation for that. Thank you so much. And Ernie, we thank you. Before coming to Portland, by the way, Jones responded to emergencies all across the country working for FEMA. The mayor declared January 17th, Ernie Jones Appreciation Day. Way to go, Ernie. Happy retirement. Up next, it's not unusual to see sheep on a farm, right? But these animals aren't here for their wool. See how they're taking care of rows and rows of solar panels instead.
Now on the good stuff, it's a fluffy approach to lawn care. The mowers on a Texas company's 330 acre solar farm are always hungry. Sean Giggy with our sister station in Dallas introduces us. One of the biggest obstacles with solar power isn't darkness, it's plants. So if the grass grows higher than the solar panels, then that affects the, it creates what's called shading and that affects the amount of energy that we're able to produce. Alora Arana is the project development manager for Adapture Renewables, which owns this 330 acre solar farm in Gainesville. She says not only can grass create shade, mowing it is one of the company's biggest expenses. So, to lower the cost, Adapture has contracted an unlikely team of landscapers. <laughs> 467 sheep now maintain the land, eating their way through 330 acres of grass. Just kind of endless growth so those sheep can eat, just eat as much as they want. Rancher J.R. Howard provides the sheep. He says they don't just eat vegetation, they help it grow. <laughs> the soil's organic content has improved 300% meaning the land could also be used for farming or beekeeping. I know the sheep would be a perfect fit for this. As expected, the flock has saved a lot of money. We have not had to bring out um, or do any traditional mowing on this site since they have been introduced. It isn't just cheaper, it's cleaner. No lawn mowers means no emissions. <laughs> providing enough clean energy to power more than 14,000 homes. I think the sheep love it out here. I mean, it's just free food at all times, whenever you want. I think it's real nice out here for them. For them and all of yous. Yeah, we're not sheepish about solar panels. All right, that's enough of that. <laughs> Let's stay on the animal beat for now. It was a big day for a famous resident of the Cincinnati Zoo. Fiona the hippo turned seven years old. Yeah, you've likely seen her videos on social media. Back in 2017, Fiona was born six weeks premature, weighing only 29 pounds, but now She's thriving. At her age, Fiona is approaching hippo adulthood and now weighs more than 2,400 pounds. It's a beautiful creature. Well, from sheep to hippos and now on to horses. But these aren't just any horses. They're professional dancers as well. Rachel Krause with our sister station in Denver got a look at some of the performers and performances in the National Western Stock Show. Dancing with Horses, it's a, it's a really unique show. Whether the arena is empty or the crowd is on its feet, when that spotlight hits, you can't look away. He likes attention and he likes being in the spotlight. 16-year-old Eli loves to dance. Here is our own Sherry Schwarzenberger. So does his owner, Sherry. Eli agrees, yes. And he's got a great personality. He's a ham. He loves the attention and the people. Sherry grew up down the road in Longmont first coming to the stock show to help her dad. You know, we grew up coming down here and watching him compete. And then as my sister um, and I grew up, we started competing as well and, and coming and performing. So it's a family affair. Horse dancing has always been special, a tradition. We did a Beatles routine one year. Last year we did Top Gun. The joy of performing, taking center stage for them both. And as soon as you go through those gates, he gets all, he gets all happy and he loves it. And then he knows at the end he gets an apple. He's ready. <laughs> He's ready for ready for rehearsal. Inside the arena, Nicholas and Gerardo Jerry Diaz get Libriano ready for his first show. He's just a very charismatic horse. He has a lot of character and a lot of personality, as you can see. This stallion may be new to the stage. He wants to roll real bad. But not the Diaz family. I remember carrying Nicolas in my arms at the rodeo here in Denver when he was just an infant. And here he is now, 20 years later, as fifth generation horseman performing with mom and dad. So it's very special in our hearts. Jerry Diaz has been with the National Western for 39 years. We live and breathe these horses. A passion he's passed down to his son. He is Ball. James Ball. Moving through every trick and trot with Libriano. Almost like a dream come true. For the Diaz family, the stage here is a second home a chance to share the spotlight and showcase the horses they love. It's a dance they hope never ends. When we're in the arena together, we cannot describe uh, how special it is. 
gosh, what an amazing relationship they have with those horses, too. That's so cool to see. All right, straight ahead, some inspiration for your weekend plans, including where you have a chance of spotting some bald eagles. While a lot of events last week were canceled for the weather, there are plenty of unique activities to check out this weekend. So here are some ideas. Fans of jazz might want to head to Clark College in Vancouver. It's the 60th annual Clark College Jazz Festival. The event runs Thursday through Saturday. You can check out the schedule and ticket info at clark.edu. Or if a winter ale hits the spot, you can visit the Tualatin Winter Brew Festival. It's a fundraiser for the Tualatin High School Athletics. The festival happens Saturday from 1 until 9 at the Stickman Brewing Tualatin Beer Hall. The Hollywood Theater in Portland is hosting the Motorcycle Film Festival this weekend. Showing start at 6 Friday and Saturday. You can see four feature films with the proceeds going to the o Oregon Motorcycle Road Racing Association. Visit the Hollywood Theater's website for the schedule. And if bird watching sounds like fun, you might want to head to the Dalles on Saturday. It's the 14th annual Eagle Watch from 10 until 3. The Army Corps of Engineers and Forest Service has park rangers out that can answer questions about bald eagles that like to gather around the Dalles Dam this time of year. There will also be live demonstrations with other raptor species. For more weekend inspiration, you can check out our Eight Things to Do article up each week on KGW.com. That is all the time that we have for now. But hey, if you still haven't eaten dinner yet and maybe you're thinking about ordering out, we're going to leave you with a few more of your foodie photos from your favorite local restaurants. Oh my gosh, these look so good. Thanks for taking a little time for the good stuff.
everybody, I'm Brittany Falkers. Well, a lot of events last week were canceled for the weather. There are plenty of unique activities to check out this weekend. So here are some ideas. Fans of jazz might want to head to Clark College in Vancouver. It's the 60th annual Clark College Jazz Festival. The event runs Thursday through Saturday. You can check out the schedule and ticket info at clark.edu. Or if a winter ale hits the spot, you can visit the Tualatin Winter Brew Festival. It's a fundraiser for Tualatin High School Athletics. The festival happens Saturday from 1 until 9 at the Stickman Brewing Tualatin Beer Hall. The Hollywood Theater in Portland is hosting the Motorcycle Film Festival this weekend. Showing start at 6 Friday and Saturday. You can see four feature films with the proceeds going to the Oregon Motorcycle Road Racing Association. Visit the Hollywood Theater's website for the schedule. And if bird watching sounds like fun, you might want to head out to the Dalles on Saturday. It's the 14th annual Eagle Watch from 10 until 3. The Army Corps of Engineers and Forest Service has park rangers.